Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service. Uh, today is the 6th of November, and um, only a few of you were here at uh, 7 in the morning, so well done. Uh, you all fell back appropriately. Um, we're really thrilled to have you here today. Today is a big day for us at St. Bart's. It was on this day, well, on the 1st of November, All Saints Day, which you know, the church, we can move the days around, uh, this church began. So this is our seventh um, anniversary of the formation of St. Bart's East Dallas. And a seven is a significant um, a number in the scriptures. And so we're, we're really excited about uh, today and really thrilled that you're here with us. A couple of things. There is an evening service preceded by supper here at 4.30 this evening. We'd love for you to come join us. And uh, the other thing is, as it's All Saints Day, one of the things that we do is when we come to Holy Communion, we uh, pause and we give thanks to God for those near and dear to us who've gone before us. And some of you who've emailed in the names of uh, loved ones that you would like to be included in that, and it just may be that you didn't check your email on Friday or Saturday or this morning. And so if you have someone you'd like included, what I'm going to invite you to do is fill in their name on the back page of your bulletin, and then tear it like that, and then submit it in the offering plate as it goes by, and we'll do our best to include those. Chris will be reading them, so please, if you're like me and left-handed, write legibly. We wouldn't want to remember the wrong person, Um, or maybe we would. Let's stand. Let me pray. Lord, on this Sunday, as we celebrate the love that you've put on, the, on display for the world to see, and as we baptize uh, people into your church and into the faith, we, uh, we invite you to draw near to us as we seek to draw near to you. Would you come, Lord Jesus, and move in our hearts, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Please remain standing for opening hymn.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Please remain standing as we continue in worship. You are good, you're good, and oh, you 
dark and fleshed out the wonder of life and as you speak a hundred billion galaxies are born in the vapor of your breath the planets form if the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. If creation sings your praises, so will I. On a hill you created, 
light of the world abandoned in darkness to die and as you speak a haunt of billion fairs disappear where you lost your life so I could find it If you left the grave behind, your soul will lie. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed and work of our core love. If you glad and show surrender, so will I. See your heart a billion different ways. Every precious one, a child who died to save. If you gave your life to love, then so will I. Like you would again a hundred billion times. But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never leaves the one behind. Lord, as we've been singing of all that you've done, even now, in this posture of worship, friends, let's offer ourselves to him just as we are. Some of us are tired. Some of us are full of energy. Some of us are excited. Some of us are weary. And Lord Jesus, in your presence, in community, we offer ourselves to you. And we thank you that you Take us as we are. We ask that you would lead us deeper into the knowledge of the love that you have for us. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord be with you. Almighty God, you've knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son. Give us grace to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those ineffable joys that you've prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Do be seated for our readings. And youth, or as my cousin Vinny says, youths, you can follow J.D. out for your lesson. Today's lesson is from Revelation. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever, amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know, And he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, 
and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. Let the praises of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hands. To wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To inflict on them the judgment decreed, this is the glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you and revile you and spurn your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For so their fathers did to the prophets. Be merciful, even as your Father is merciful. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray together. Lord God, on this day when we celebrate All Saints Day, as we come to watch many be baptized into your name, initiated into the life of your church, we pray, Lord, that you would hold before us the vision of your word, the the vision of that heavenly joy and hope to which you're calling us as your saints uh, to know you and to enjoy you um, and to sing your praises forever. We pray, uh, Lord, that you would stir our hearts uh, to move towards you more and more. And I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, For those of you who don't know me, I'm Chris Myers. I'm one of the priests here. The seventh anniversary uh, of weekly worship at St. Bart's, that's what we're celebrating today. In 2015, a group, a core group of people, some from All Saints, some that have been gathered from East Dallas, started meeting in a pastorate in a small group in the house of Jane Amy Wright. And over the course of that year, 2015, um, we had some gathering events, We had some parties because we like to have those. That's one of the things that we like to do. And then on November 1st, 2015, we began weekly worship down the road at Central Lutheran at 5 p.m. on Sunday night. And here we are seven years later. That, on paper, is an impossible thing. I don't know how many of you know anything about church planting, but the one thing about church planting is that it usually doesn't work. (laughs) It's a very hard thing to do, and God has been so faithful And Morgan and I, um, and many of you on the core team have been here since the beginning, and we prayed that God would establish us and root us in East Dallas in such a way that we could, by his grace, build something that would outlive us. Um, And I think we're on our way to doing that, and um, I'm so grateful for that. Um, Oh, actually, I'm overwhelmed (laughs) that we've we've made it this far. There's no, there was never any guarantee except uh, that God told us to do it, and we move forward in faith. So that was one impossible thing that happened this week. Another impossible thing that happened this week is that I submitted my dissertation. (laughs) Um, Yes, and Bill Hendricks, who's not here, he said to me back in the fall or spring when I was sent out for my leave of study, he said to me something that was very true. He said, I don't know a PhD who's ever been prayed for more than you, which is amazing and so true. And I just wanted to say, as a way to sort of celebrate St. Bart's and that um, accomplishment, is in the acknowledgments, one of the things I say in my dissertation is 
as I dedicate part of it to the community of St. Bart's, a lot of people have asked me what the dissertation is about. I won't bore you with that. A couple of you have asked to read it. God bless your souls. But really, it's about behold and become. It's about looking at God so that we can come more like him. And it's all about the theology of that throughout the last 2,000 years, but really it comes down to what St. Bart's is about, is that we could look at God um, and that we could become more like him. So that's what we've set out to do here. And today I want to talk about baptism. And I want to say a few things about baptism, um, just a few things, because I want the sacrament to speak for itself in many ways as we watch people um, immersed into the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and let the sacrament really speak for itself. But I want to say three main things about baptism. Um, you may have heard the phrase, I think it's one of the seven habits of highly effective people, begin with the end in mind. Um, if you want it slightly more philosophically, Soren Kierkegaard said that life is understood backwards but can only be lived forwards. What does that mean? It means we have to set something in front of us that we move towards as we journey. And one of the things that baptism is, is it marks the beginning of the pilgrimage of the, the Christian life. That one of the primary ways that the people of God have understood what it is to be a person of faith is to be on a pilgrimage, to be on a journey. But towards what? Well, that's what Revelation chapter seven sets before us today, is a vision of where God wants to take his people. God's intention for his people is that we would stand before him day and night, an untold multitude of people from every tribe, tongue, and nation who have been immersed into his name, immersed into his divine life, who worship him and praise him forever that they would be sheltered in his presence, that their tears would be wiped away, that all pain and suffering is taken away. In a word, he's taking us into his presence in heaven. That's the end. We begin with the end in mind. Where is God taking us? What, what is the content of our <clears throat> Christian hope? As Christians, we're people of faith, hope, and love. What do we hope for? One of the things that we hope for is that we will stand in God's presence forever. And maybe we don't talk about it enough because talking about heaven all the time can maybe turn into a distraction where we don't try to bring heaven to earth like the, Lord prayer, like the Lord's prayer says. But if we don't keep it in front of us, I think we can lose our way on this pilgrimage. This multitude from every tribe, tongue, and nation stand before the Lord. And this is the reading for All Saints Day because it gives us a vision of what it is, this mystical body that is knit together in his love that the collect, the collect talked about. The other way to put it is God's, or Christ's one holy Catholic and apostolic church. The other way to put it is his body, connected throughout time and space, brought together fully and finally into his presence. And the beginning of that journey the formal beginning, the rite of initiation into that journey is baptism. Baptism is the rite of initiation into the life of the church where one is formally and sacramentally marked for the beginning of this pilgrimage. And in the early church, you would enter the waters naked and be washed, and as you came out of the waters, you would be given a white robe. You're given a white robe as a vision of the journey that God is taking you on. As in Revelation 7, it says, one of the elders addressed me saying, who are these clothed in white robes and where have they come from? I said to him, sir, you know, and he said to me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. These are specifically maybe talking about the martyrs, but the martyrs symbolizing all those who have been washed all those who've been given a white robe, a new name, and have set out on this journey towards this heavenly vision. So we have a beginning point set for us in baptism and we have an end point set for us in Revelation and all the moves in between, all the twists and turns that life can take is the pilgrimage of the Christian life. And when we feel like we're lost along the way, 
part of what we're encouraged to do is to look back to the beginning and to look forward in hope to the end. To look back to the beginning and to remind ourselves that we are the baptized. That we have been marked by the name of God, that we've been immersed into his divine life, and that he will lead us to where he's taking us. So then, then we can look forward in hope to this vision of saying, Lord, where are you taking us? Maybe I feel like I'm lost. It's, it's Psalm 23, really. <laughs> he, the shepherd is leading us on a journey, and sometimes that journey goes through the valley of the shadow of death, and yet we do not doubt, we still hope, because he is with us, leading us through that, and he's taking us some, somewhere. So we have the beginning marked for us in baptism, and we have the vision of the heavenly hope set before us here. So we think of baptism as a pilgrimage. That's the first thing about baptism. The second thing about baptism is that baptism is a boundary crossing. We move from one world into another world. Um, In 1 Corinthians 10, Paul talks about the people of Israel at the Red Sea and that when they crossed the Red Sea that they were baptized into Moses And then he says, but you have been baptized into Christ. And he uses the image of the Red Sea as a picture of baptism. That on this side of the Red Sea was one world, and on this other side of the Red Sea was another world. And to cross the Red Sea, to move through the waters of baptism, is to move from one realm to another. If you lived in Berlin during the Cold War, you would know which world you're in, based on which side of the wall you lived on. If you lived in the east side of the Berlin Wall, your life was very different than if you lived on the west side of the Berlin Wall. A different world, different government, different sensibilities, different way of being, but if you crossed that boundary, you stepped into a new reality. And that's what baptism is. It's a boundary crossing from one world into another world. In Romans 6, Paul gives us this image of baptism, is that the the flooding waters are the waters that come back down upon Pharaoh and the chariots and all the enemies of the people of God and drown them in the waters and then we move through as his people in safety. We move from one world into a new world. We move out of one being into a new way of being. We move out of darkness into light, out of death into life. Or as Paul succinctly puts it in Colossians 1, he has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Baptism is the sacramental marker of that movement from one world to another, from one way of being into another way of being. So baptism marks the beginning of our pilgrimage. Baptism is a boundary crossing. And then the last thing that I wanna say is that baptism is a naming ceremony. It's about identity. When Jesus tells us to go into the world and make disciples and baptize them, he tells us to baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's kind of the one thing, as controversial as baptism can be across denominations, it's the one thing that we agree on (laughs) that we should be doing (laughs) is that it's baptism in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. J.I. Packer in his book, Knowing God, says that the highest privilege of the gospel is that we are adopted as sons and daughters of God. That when we are forgiven, yes, that's important, that we are justified, that's important, but those are all means to an end. Really, the highest privilege of the gospel, the good news of the good news, is that we are children of God. Baptism is is part of the adoption when we take on the family name of God, when we are immersed into his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we can think of the Christian life, what we would call the journey of sanctification or the pilgrimage, or however you want to put it, is that we are trying to move deeper and deeper and deeper into our family identity, that we are trying to live out of our family identity, that we are trying to live the family resemblance to be who we actually are, If we already are a son or a daughter, then we're not trying to become a son or a daughter or earn that. That's already, 
It's already done. It's already taken care of. But we want to live in light of that reality, to bear the family resemblance. Which brings us to the gospel passage, the Beatitudes. What does the life of the blessed look like? What does the family life of God look like? It looks like the Beatitudes, the poor in spirit, the merciful, the pure in heart, the righteous, those who bless their enemies, those who bless those who persecute them. The last part of that passage that we had from Luke sums it all up for us. Be merciful. Why? As your Father in heaven is merciful. Be like your family. You've been given a new name. You've been given a new family identity in baptism. So live out of the overflow of who God has called you to be and made you to be. Be merciful as your Father in heaven is merciful. Baptisms have often taken place on the celebration of All Saints Day, and I think it's for this reason of setting before us the beginning so that we can move forward in hope to the end, and the vision of being in the presence of God, of worshiping forever, of being filled with heavenly hope, knowing that we are clothed in white robes. But All Saints Day is also a day of remembrance. We remember those who have gone before us, And one way to put it is this, is that the communion of saints is the community of the baptized. And my question to you on a day of remembrance as we celebrate a seventh anniversary, whatever it is that's going on in your life and in your own faith, I would ask you this question, who among the baptized, who among the saints has made a difference for you? Who would you draw to mind and bring as an act of thanksgiving to God as someone in your life who's made your faith livable. Because we have those people. We don't journey alone. This is not a pilgrimage alone. We're walking together. And I know for me that there are those people along the way who've made my faith livable. In the sense that in their expression of faith, in their demonstration of hope, in their acts of love, they've shown me that this journey is actually taking us somewhere. (laughs) That we're not just moving around in a circle going nowhere, but God is taking us somewhere and he is actually transforming people. That he is actually making people more like him, more loving. So I would just simply ask you, who has expanded your vision of what it is to walk with the Lord? You could even use the Beatitudes that we read as a guide. Who has been had demonstrated the poverty of spirit, that humility to where they are able to receive the riches of God? Who has been merciful to you or you've seen being merciful to others? Who has been pure in heart and shown you that this stuff is real, that we're not just telling ourselves stories to make ourselves feel better, but that God is at work and that he is actually making us more and more like himself. So as we move into a time of prayer, just as we pause before we move into the baptisms, I just want you to draw those people to mind and to thank God for them. To thank God for family members or a youth pastor or a teacher or a friend or someone who invited you to something where you heard the gospel and responded. Those people who've made your faith possible. We are on a pilgrimage, but we do it together. We do not walk alone, we walk with all the other baptized, and we walk with the saints. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you on this day, seventh anniversary of weekly worship here. uh, We thank you for your faithfulness, and we thank you for all the people along the way who've made a difference to the life of this community, difference to us. And as a simple act of gratitude, Lord, we draw to mind those people that we are thankful for, those that we remember that have made our faith livable, who've demonstrated to us, Lord, your love. We thank you for them. And we thank you that in baptism, you initiate us into the life of your church and that you give us this marker of the beginning of a journey, of this time that we move from one world into another. We pray, Lord, that you'd be in our midst and that you'd bless us In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you, Chris. Exciting moment. Now we have three families baptizing their children. So would the Williford family, would the Radcliffe family, the children are about to come in, and would the Yates family come and join me up front? Let's welcome the children as they come in. Welcome, children. And if you join me on page um, six of your orders of service, we'll get everyone situated up here. So come on down. Wonderful. Yeah, come on up. Wonderful. Come on up, Yates family, we'll put you over here on stage left. Let's all squeeze in here. Fantastic. Amazing. Wonderful. Now, so this is uh, in baptism. What the, the parents and godparents are doing is they are making uh, vows on behalf of the children. They're penciling them in. And then as we, the community, along with the parents and godparents, raise these children up in the faith, they will ink them in on their own later on, as we saw last week in confirmation. So there's a part where all of the, uh, the children and the parents will have to answer, but there's also a part that you, the community, have to answer. And if you're not convincing, we'll keep doing it until we're convinced. Got it? So eyes sharp, uh, bulletins open. Let's go. All right. So, parents, do you present these children to receive the sacrament of baptism? I do. All right, children. The answer here is I do. Okay. Do you desire to be baptized? I do. Well done. Will you, ch uh, parents and godparents, will you be responsible for seeing that these children are brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will. Will you, by your prayers of witness, help them to grow into the full stature of Christ? All right, now here we ask the following questions, which is the threefold renunciation and the threefold. Uh, affirmation. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you turn to Jesus? Oh, do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? All right. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? <clears throat> do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord and Savior? All right, to the congregation, this is your part. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? Let us join these persons who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? <laughs> Let's stand as we do this together. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will. will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will. will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will. 
Will you seek and serve Christ faithfully, serving others through the ministries of St. Bartholomew's Anglican Church? Please sit or kneel as we pray together. Let us now pray for these persons being baptized. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. Scarlett, would you come help me? Would you pour this water into this bowl? By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we're reborn by the Holy Spirit. Thereful and joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into the fellowship these children who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. Um, So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the children in turn. We're going to baptize them with a bit of water, not to disturb the hair too much. Some of us put more effort into our hair than others myself included, and then we will anoint them with oil as an outward sign that they have been marked and sealed by Christ in baptism. So, I'm left-handed. We're going to begin on the left. All right. So, you are, how have you named this child? Kingston. Kingston. Come over here, Kingston. Kingston, I want to thank you. It has been my life goal to baptize (laughs) Spider-Man. All right, so stand just a little bit closer. Put your head, lean forward, your head. I'll do it. Well, you can help me. Isn't that cold? Here, now stick your hand out. I'll do this. You just hold on to the bowl right there. Okay, ready? Kingston, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let me pray for you. Kingston, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. High five. Well done. All right. Who do we have next? Mike and Alex, how have you named this child? London. London. All right. Just lean forward a little bit. Yeah. You can. It's all right. All right. London, I baptize you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I sign you now in the name of Jesus and declare that you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Congratulations. How have you named this child? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. All right. I baptize you, Brooklyn, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I anoint you with oil in the name of Jesus as an outward sign that you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. (laughs) 
How have you named this child? Austin. 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 I baptize you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I anoint you with oil in the name of Jesus as an outward sign that you are sealed and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. All right. How have you named this child? John. All right. All right, John, don't worry. I got you. You can see your parents. Yes, exactly. John, I baptize you in the name of the Father. I know. The Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well done. And I anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and declare that you are sealed as marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Finn, come on up. All right, stand right there. We all set up. Lean in just a little bit. All right, Finn, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I anoint you with oil in the name of Jesus as an outward sign that you are marked and sealed in Christ in baptism. Amen. <laughs> Last but not least, how have you named this child? Scarlet. All right, Scarlet, I baptize you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I sign you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as an outward sign that you're sealed and marked in Christ in baptism. Amen. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you by water and the Holy Spirit you've bestowed upon these, your servants, the forgiveness of sins, and covered them with your grace and love. Sustain them, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give them an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized, saying, we receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen. Would you please stand? Let's applaud. Well done, everyone. <clears throat> Just a little something for you. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of God's peace. Peace, y'all. Congratulations. Peace, Alex. Well, good morning, good morning. Do take a seat. Just a couple of announcements for you. I, I've got, we've got to commend the children. That was the most quiet entry into the church ever. It's almost like it didn't happen to me. You know, they just kind of quietly came in, found it. So well done, children. Well done. Not that you need to be quiet in our midst, but um, it's nice to see you again. Couple of announcements for you. Uh, this evening at 4.30, we are having our uh, rescheduled St. Bart's Fest. 
Uh, we're going to have fajita pizza and food together, and then we're going to come in uh, for a 6 p.m. service of thanksgiving for all that God has done in our midst. So we'd love for you to come and join us for that. Also, as I said at the beginning of the 9 o'clock service, which you may have missed, uh, this is All Saints Day. We sent out an email earlier in the week, well yesterday, um, and which you may not have gotten, um, saying that as we come to the Lord's table, we're going to pause and remember those near and dear to us who've gone before us in the faith. If you didn't get the email, didn't get a chance to um, give us their names, you've got an opportunity. Uh, would you tear off the back page of your bulletin, put their name on the, that sheet, and as the offering plate goes by, put it in the offering plate. Now, if you're left-handed like me, please write legibly, because Chris will have to read them, and we wouldn't want to remember the wrong person. Well, as I said earlier, that might be nice too, but we also want to include the person you want to be remembered. Uh, what else, Chris? Everything else is in your bulletin there. The big thing is this evening, and this evening we're going to be, uh, during the sermon time, um, we're going to be remembering and sharing some of the stories of how God has moved in our midst uh, from that, the wreath, and, uh, and so it's going to be fun for the, the whole family. Any birthdays this week? I know some of you are celebrating a birthday. Come on down. Allie, yes, of course. Who else? Jamie, wonderful. Sarah, come on up on stage. Come on up, take the, you know. Yeah, come on. Why not? Mike, any other birthdays going once? Would anyone like to have a birthday today? Wonderful. All right, let's turn to the birthday prayer on page 12. Stretch out your hands a blessing, and let's pray for these birthday boys and girls. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts may thy peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Another round of applause. Why not? Yeah. Well done. Um, as we come to the Lord's table... Can I encourage you uh, to humble yourselves under the hand of Almighty God, and he will lift you up, to cast all your burdens unto him, for he cares for you. to cheer and 
to guide a strength for today and bright a hope for tomorrow and blessings all mine and ten thousand beside great is thy Great is thy faithfulness. Now morning by morning, new mercies I see, and all I have needed, thy hand, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me. We celebrate this Holy Communion in remembrance of All Saints Day, lifting up the names of these precious ones who have gone before us. John Andrew Short, Kali Sug, Manuel Duran, Robert Ballard, Christina Perez, Donald Schmidt, Roger Pickett, Charles Powers, William B. and Genevieve Young, Paul V. and Mary Ann Stoller, Philip Hazlitt, Travis Griffith, James Gilliland, Mary Hull, Sarah Doughty, David Beckman, Nelson Kiszczewski, Fernando Larzabal, Cecilia Larzabal, Rosemary Courtney, Kirk Adkinson, Terry Murphy, Steve Gushy, Mark Hall, Ray Hall, Samuel Larson, Leroy and Ruth Miller, Shane Singleton, Felicia Feeland, Fred Farley, Kate Von Ruden, Arturo Cerna, Beth Savis, Wayne Caldwell, Joe Raschuti, Louise Raschuti, Charlie Stevenson, Jonathan Martin, and Gary Manning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. 
His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please sit or kneel as we sing together the words Christ our Savior has taught us. Christ is alive forever. We are because he is. We are one body. We share one bread. Draw near with faith. Christ is the host and we are his guests. Friends, these are the gifts of God and they are given for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
As we stand together, Lord, we remember once again all that you've done for us as individuals, all those you put in our lives who've loved us well, who've shown us your ways. And we thank you for this community of faith, St. Bart's. We thank you for all that you've done in our midst to show us your goodness. And we pray that we could go forth in your love and show that love to the world. Let us pray together this prayer for mission. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. Amen. Now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Remain standing for our closing hymn. alone my, my hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Fur through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still Together, all our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's work we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes we set on the risen Christ. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.